Hey everybody, it's Eddie J on Crypto for GrowMyBag.tv and there's a lot going on. More, more in the background that most people don't understand, um, basically because they're not looking. It's right there, not so much in the background. Um, you've got Grayscale hemorrhaging money, hemorrhaging money, and specifically Bitcoin. So. When you look at this, you're saying, well, how much how much does Grayscale have to, you know, have to uh, to hemorrhage before they wake up and go, oh, we better do something. The first stab at it was the Grayscale mini Bitcoin trust or whatever the hell they're calling it. Give uh, off some of that, some of those outflows that didn't work. Now they're saying, well, you know, when we hit 12 billion. You can put a, a number on how much money you expect to hemorrhage before you decide to get up and lower your fees, because that's the plan. When we hit 12 billion, we will lower off, you know, 12 billion dollars in, in outflows. We'll lower our fees. Let me stop and think about this. So you knew what was going to happen. You had already done the math and put a number on it. You knew when you were going to implement some kind of a stop gap, a real stop gap. And what else is going on that you knew you had to hemorrhage so much money? Now, I've been talking about this for a long time. Grayscale's largest partner, or at least was, probably still is, is Digital Currency Group. Digital Currency Group also owned, past tense, Genesis Global. I say owned because Genesis is bankrupt now. That means that Digital Currency Group needs money. I've been saying this for a while. They've been needing money. They need money. They'll continue to need money. And that could possibly be why Grayscale is hemorrhaging so much. A calculated event. That affects the market because they're going to flood the open market as opposed to when they buy. That's always back there. OTC. Over the counter. That means they're going direct. You know, usually person to person, not on a not on an exchange where it's visible. And they do that. Um, well, you could say it could to be sneaky, but you know, companies do that also so that they don't have a huge effect on the market. That's why OTC exists. Now, that's that's them hemorrhaging. The amount of inflows also took a huge nosedive everywhere else. But still, BlackRock, Fidelity, they most of them still saw inflows, positive inflows. All I'm saying is that if you are educated about what you're doing in crypto, that ETF ain't meant for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not meant for you. If you know how to if you know how to buy Bitcoin directly, an ETF really isn't meant for you, at least in my case, right? Me, my case, my kid's case, that's not meant for us. Because why would I buy into your ETF when I can buy direct and have my own? Sort of like when you buy gold. Unless you've got that gold in your hands, is that gold really yours? And you can talk about how you bought real gold. That's cute. Did you really? Did you really buy real gold? You got a certificate that says this is good for whatever gold is stored someplace else by someone else. If I don't have it in my hands, it's not mine. That's how I look at almost everything. Right? I'm a, I'm a kid from New York City. I'm a kid from the Bronx. Well, Queens in the Bronx. So if it's not in my hand, it either doesn't exist or it's not mine. Or it's not mine right now. So I'm going to buy my crypto directly. ETFs are for those that want to dip their toe into the cryptoverse without having to get their hands dirty, right? I just want to, just want to get in there a little bit. That's fine. I have nothing against that. This world is not meant for everybody. You can't be faint of heart and be, you know, and be involved in crypto straight up. That's that's the truth. But there were a lot of outflows, a lot of outflows. If you're going to be involved indirectly or directly in crypto, you have to be prepared for those outflows. 
It's called profit taking. It's called correction. It's called retracement. It goes by many names. It doesn't matter. There's going to be a pullback. There's going to be a huge pullback. There'll be dips. There'll be crevices. There'll be cracks. There'll be canyons. Suck it up. Suck it up. When we get into the numbers later, you're going to see how we dropped 14% and all we did was just erase the past two weeks. We're nowhere near where we used to be. Now you understand why I'm so calm. This is what it is. Then you've got BlackRock partnering up with this company Securitize. And what they're looking to do is what actually, I'm sorry, let me rephrase what they have done is to, let me read this to you. What they've done is create the BlackRock USD Institutional Digital Liquidity Fund. Oh, I think I need a drink of water just after saying that. Um, what that fund is supposed to do, it's expected to tokenize real world assets. And I told you this was going to happen. I told you a long time ago, this was going to be a trend. Now that you have BlackRock doing it, you're going to see other firms doing this. Securitized assets are where they're at. I'm not talking about <laughs> my brother bought a new car. I'm not going to tell you what kind of car it was. It is, but it's mad cool. Um, he's a really smart guy. He's a CIO of a major company. And he had to read the manual just to turn, learn how to turn on the radio. <laughs> That's big. There's there's a lot of toys in his car. Um, can't wait to go down to Florida and you know, have him show for me around. It's, it's just going to be awesome. But I was talking to him and he was like, yeah, well, I, I, I digitally signed, you know, my contracts to sell my other car and get this car and blah, 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 blah. Yes, they're both very expensive cars. Um, and he deserves it. He's been busting his tail. Michael's been busting his tail for a long time and he just straight up deserves it. I'm proud of him. Um, I said, Michael, that's not tokenization, though. That's digitizing paper documents that's taking paper these are my these are some of my notes that's what i use to take notes and stuff um that's that's just digitization right tokenization is actually having that on the blockchain being able to track it any any alterations any changes depending on it if it's an nft right just writing it to the blockchain and managing managing that document through the blockchain so it's an open record. And he was like, ah, oh, you know what? You're right. And he knows what I'm talking about. He knows what I'm talking about. But I had to bring him back, right? And that's what I'm talking about. When you look at this deal with BlackRock and Securitize and what they're looking to do again, you know, I want to say a year and a half ago, I told you guys about how you're going to see tokenized assets, uh, mutual funds, stocks, options, bonds, blah, 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 uh, real estate, you know, Real estate titles, real estate investment trusts, I think, is going to have that industry in itself is going to have major, major, major disruption just because of securitized, securitized assets. The ability to um, buy into a building, buy a piece of a building, a fractionalized building because of tokenization. Yeah, that's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. And because it's tokenized. I'd be able to do that any place around the world. Again, tokenization is going to be a huge thing. So when I look at BlackRock doing this, I think it's going to be tremendous. And I'm expecting other firms to join in. I think it's just going to be huge. Genesis Global. Genesis is owned by Digital Currency Group. Digital Currency Group also owns Grayscale. Genesis settled with the SEC for $21 million. Grayscale's been hemorrhaging money. The New York AG is looking for about a three or four billion dollar price tag on uh, to get out of DCG. DCG owns a lot of Grayscale. See where this is going? Yeah, I've been talking about that for a really, really long time. When that implosion happened between Genesis and Gemini happened, when they got hammered by the SEC for allegedly doing the whole security sales thing, 
I said this is going to get messy and it's going to get messy huge. I said that Digital Currency Group is going to wind up selling a lot of their holdings. And they did. You saw you saw the sale of Coindesk. That's right. They used to own Coindesk. They don't anymore. You're going to see them sell off some stuff. It'll be quiet at first and it'll make sense at first and then it'll just start building. And here we are at a crescendo where you're starting to see Graystale dumping. Genesis finally closing the book on, you know, with the SEC. I think that's the last case. But Digital Currency Group still has problems because of the New York AG, Attorney General. Four billion dollars, even if it was three billion dollars. I'm pretty sure it's four. Those are big numbers. Those are huge numbers. And if you're if you happen to be a company that's holding a lot of GPTC, well, I can sell and make some money. I don't care how we sell, just sell it so we can make some money. You understand how that $12 billion number from the CEO of Grayscale before they decide to drop their fees? You can see how that math happened, right? I know I can. And that's a problem to me, which is why I, I don't muck around with Grayscale. At first, you know, a long time ago, before before all the approvals happened with the Bitcoin spot ETFs, I was like, you know, you could buy some GPTC and get that at a discount. Remember who holds or the kinds of people or how long these people, excuse me, these people have been holding GPTC. It's been for a long time. So think about how far back some of these people have owned this since, you know, Bitcoin was in the in the teens. In the 20s, in the 30s, in the 40s, even in the 50s. And here you are with Bitcoin being in the 60s. It had hit 70s, setting all new all-time highs. You can see why a lot of people would want to get out when they can. It's pure profit-taking. Pure profit-taking. So it makes sense that they would create a new, a new you know, vehicle, new, you know, asset class. Um, not class, but new asset to attract new money because this money is going to be depleting because of when it started. It's not hard to understand that, right? It's not just people came in today and started dumping, you know, came in yesterday and started dumping today. Nah, a lot of these people came in a long time ago and are like, oh my God, I don't care that it dropped X amount. I'm up so high, I want my profits. Can't be mad at that. Should not be a shocker. The amount of money that gets hemorrhaged on a day-to-day -day basis, that's painful. That's very painful. And then you sit back and you kind of go, well, you know, GPTC could actually go away in less than a month. That's how much money they've been hemorrhaging. If they keep on this trajectory, that's how much money they've been hemorrhaging. So in 30 some odd days, they could be gone. I doubt that that will happen, but it's possible. You can see that that's possible. And in all that downward pressure, oh man, what else happens in 30 days? The having event. The having event happens. So it could very well be that people want to get out of here to extract all that profit and put it someplace else to enjoy the having event. Just saying, these are things to think about. Something else I heard is, you know, with the purchases that MicroStrategy has done, they hold over 1% of all the Bitcoin currently mined. Wow, that's big, that's big. But it's gonna get dwarfed by BlackRock, right? Because black that's all BlackRock does is play with money. They've got more of it than MicroStrategy. So as much as Michael Saylor would like to try to keep up, Compared to BlackRock, he's just going to be the little engine that could. The little engine will get it done, right? It'll make money. But it's not going to do what BlackRock and Fidelity, 21 shares, ARK Invest. It's not going to do what all those companies are going to do. Coin shares now. It's not going to do what all those companies are going to do. This is one standalone business, right? Making money for itself on, you know, by itself. These are basically money managers who constantly get inflows of money. Yesterday, I dropped a note on growmybag.tv and I said, you know, I don't think BlackRock is gonna worry about Texas's, you know, pension fund pulling out 
their eight point, I think it was eight point five eight billion dollars in assets that BlackRock was managing in this because you know fossil fuels, Texas Fox, fossil fuels, and BlackRock's kind of like, yeah, that's going to go away. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm pretty sure they're not worried about your eight billion dollars that that went away, considering how much money they're making with Bitcoin inflows. On a side note, my son and I were thinking about buying a buying gas stations. It's a part of the whole fossil fuel thing. And we were thinking about buying gas stations and, you know, running those for a bit and making money, all that good stuff. Woke up today um, because I've been busy last night, basically had unplugged and I was just, you know, nose down doing writing. Hopped on this morning. My boy Elliot, Elliot's like, he's like my brother. Elliot hops on and he's like, yo, dog, here's an article for you. Shell, over the next few years, is expecting the, to to just close 1,000 gas stations. Let that wash over you. 1,000, get now, 1,000 doesn't seem like a big number, but it's significant considering they're closing them. Closing gas stations. Tell me how nuts that is. We're not talking about some little knockoff company, local, you know, local company. No, we're talking about Shell is looking to drop a thousand gas stations. Why is that? Well, obviously, because EVs, even though they've taken a dip now, are going to go back up. Don't, don't worry. Relax. I'm bringing it back in for you. Right. So energy is changing to renewable energy. Even all the miners that are out there, a lot of them are moving over to renewable energy. Riot Platforms just bought 30,000 rigs. Investing in new spaces. They're going to be ready for the having event. But how are they implementing things? How are the, all these companies doing things? You know what they're doing? They're going eyes wide open this time and saying, we can't hit the power grid so hard. We've got to go renewable. What does that do? That puts a shining star all over crypto. Why? Because that means we're using renewable energy as opposed to fossil fuels, coal, that kind of thing. Things that are not renewable. That is big. It's things like that that all tie together. It all winds up coming back and having an effect on crypto. Now, you don't believe so, but you can see how the use of fossil fuels to mine comes back to crypto because moving from fossil to renewable is huge. It's big. So something else that happened, Bitcoin took a nosedive and people lost their minds. Again, we'll get into the numbers in a little while. Don't lose your minds. Don't lose your minds. We're, we're just back where we were a couple of weeks ago. When everyone was like, oh, wow, we're in the 60s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where we are. I'm not going to stress something that I found that's really cool. Immutable and Polygon got with King River Capital to create a one hundred million dollar gaming fund. It's called inevitable, inevitable games fund. Inevitable, immutable. And I'm just sitting there. I'm like, whoa, I told you guys Polygon is going to wake up. And they're going to demonstrate outwardly some work that they're doing. They've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes. And if you were reading the news, you'd see how much work is going on behind the scenes. This is in front. This is saying, hey, we still have the best platform out there for gaming. Come over here. More games, more interactions, more transactions, higher price of Matic. That's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting this news to drop off. I mean, to pop off with everybody else and have that news actually come up. Right. And drive Matic and Immutable up. Might not happen today. But as that news starts to starts to get out there, that's what I'm expecting all the way around. And, and, you know, that's just how I see it. That's just how I see it. But you know what we should do? We should get into the numbers. I don't want to keep you guys too long. That wouldn't be nice. 
guess these are my notes from every day, every morning. These are the, these are you know the articles that I write. These are the summaries of from the other articles that I write, and these are the links that I that I do the do everything at. You know, so you can go over to GrowMyBag.tv and actually see the articles. Let me refresh this real quick. All right, so now here we are. Check this out. If you're looking at the downside, we don't actually don't have a lot of downside. Again, I have that 5% rule. Dog we've had down another 5%. Got to call that out. Radium down 7%. I don't pay attention to anything else. Everybody else is like not down, moving sideways. When you look on the positive side, everybody's double digits on this list. So literally, you can see Pepe is up 15%. Optimism is up 38%. Um, let's see who else I'm paying attention to here. I mentioned Slurf yesterday, up 13%. Still don't know what they do. I think it's a meme. Um, let's see who else. Arbitrum is up 11%. Nervous Network up 11%. Fetch AI up 11%. Again, remember what I told you. There are a lot of those AI projects that are actually getting big money, big investment. Um, Phantom is up. I haven't heard a lot from them late as of late, but they're up 10%. Celestia up 10%. Toncoin up 10%. Qcoin, don't know why, up 10%. Um, Zilliqa, not something I mess with, but is on the watch list, 10% upward. Not bad. Not bad. But you know what? We've been on for a long time. Let me just take you over here. I just want you to see on the big board what's going on, right? That's great. But here's where I really want you to look, right here. Remember my blue bands from 57,686 to 63,714. Those were my numbers. That's my blue band right here, from here to here. Not as thin as my previous light blue band, right? Not as, not as thin when we were doing all that lateral movement then. But all we did was come back down to, you know, where we, where we were from right here. Like, what? Why are you freaking out? We're still way above where we were. Do you see where we came from? Look at where we were all the, not that long ago. Big dip right here. That was January of this year. Last time we were in this area, look at that, February of this year. February of this year. So February 26th, it hasn't even been a month. It's only, it's only the 20th of this month. And this actually, this is where we are right now, 63,215. Look at the difference between here and here in less than a month. Okay? In less than a month. Pay attention to that. You're still up. You're still up. So this, this pullback, not worried at all. Not worried at all. It's for me, it's a major opportunity to go DCA. Mona got up, it was up at 130. Don't know why we were up, Mona. Be getting rest, little girl. But she was up texting me at 130 in the morning. It was like, yo, it's at like 60, 60 and change. She was hot, sending me high fives. <laughs> Cause she bought. <laughs> she caught that dip and she bought. That's what I'm talking about. Recognizing opportunities and seizing those opportunities. That's what I'm all about. I got one more thing. I'm looking to do a live, and I'm thinking about Friday doing my first live. I need, let's call it 10 people to tell me that's a good or bad idea. If I don't get 10 people, I won't do the live. I won't do it, I'm man of my word. If I, if I don't get 10 people to tell me to do the live, I won't do the live. I need 10 people to tell me to do the live this Friday. I'll do more research that day and we'll walk through some coins together. This is what we'll do live. Get me 10 people that tell me to do the live. Anyway, this is Eddie J on Crypto for GrowMyBag.tv. I hope you like what I'm doing. Drop me a note if you like what I'm doing on GrowMyBag.tv. And if you do have suggestions on what I can do to make it better, also drop me a note. I love hearing from you guys. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.